Hey everyone, welcome back to Self Care Haven. I hope you've had a fresh new start to the new year, and I just wanted to make a video reminding you all um, that rejection can sometimes be a blessing. So I know that many of you who read my blog, have read my book, um, have watched these videos and are researching narcissistic abuse and the effects of emotional abuse are very prone to uh, thinking of rejection as a sign of unworthiness, of a lack of merit, perhaps perhaps you wonder why your emotionally abusive partner moved on to somebody else and appears to treat them better, which is absolutely not the truth. You know that for a fact that they're probably subjecting them to the same idealization, devaluation, discard phase as you were subjected to. Um, but appearances can be very deceiving and narcissists are masters of impression management. Um, so I want you to re remind yourself of that if um, you're going through that struggle right now where you're implementing no contact and you start to have fears about um, the fact that you're emotionally abusive partner or physically abusive partner or just toxic partner in general um, has moved on to somebody else. Um, I want you to know that, first of all, obviously that person was not meant to be in your life because otherwise they would be in your life. It's as simple as that. Uh, second of all, rejection really has nothing to do with your worth as a person. It has nothing to do with your value. Um, I think you've heard the quote that uh, someone's inability to see your worth and value does not uh, decrease your value. Um, that's their inability. That's their lack of capacity. That's their preference. Um, and by rejecting you, they lost out on the unique qualities and traits that make you who you are, and they're never going to get those traits and qualities in someone else. And third of all, when we're dealing with emotionally abusive and toxic people, we have to remind ourselves that it really is truly a blessing, a blessing that this relationship um, and interaction with this toxic person ended when it did, because otherwise we would have been stuck with them for even longer than we already were. So we may have invested a lot of time in this person, or we may have been a, been lucky and walked away uh, briefly after we experienced the first red flags. And if you did, then you're extremely lucky. Um, but I know that there's many people who read my blog who've invested so much time in this person, and that's one of the reasons that actually uh, enabled them to stay for so long is because they felt like they invested so much and they really wanted a return on their investment. Of course, there are more complex psychological reasons um, besides that, but that was definitely one of the reasons is the investment, the emotional, the psychological investment that we had in this person and the image that we had of this person before they exposed their true abusive self. And so when we think about it, we really did not lose out on anything. We lost out on a person who disrespected us, who didn't see our value, who didn't see how worthy we truly were. And that in itself is a blessing to lose someone who doesn't see your worth, who doesn't respect you, who doesn't treat you in the way that you deserve to be treated. So it's a brand new year and I just want you to be able to move forward in your journey knowing that um, if you think that breaking no contact will give you any sort of closure or you feel like keeping tabs on your emotionally abusive partner is any way a good idea, um, remember that you're feeding into this illusion of control. I find that one of the reasons that people struggle mostly with no contact is because they have this illusion of control. They feel like if they check up on their emotionally abusive partners, and, you know, I'm sure there's more reasons besides the solution of control. I'm sure there's a lot of trauma bonds that keep us tethered to this abusive person. And we feel that need to feed that addiction that we were so used to. Um, there's actual chemical bonds behind that, but we'll get to, we'll get to that another time. Um, we have the solution of control when we think that checking up on this person will in any way stop their moving forward in life. And that's not, that's not true. Narcissists will move on to their next victim. Uh, that's just a fact. And uh, we can think about it in, in this way. We can either sit around keeping tabs on our emotionally abusive partner, or we can move forward with our own lives. Uh, we can meet new people, we can create new hobbies, we can pursue our dreams, and we can stage our own victories. So um, I want you to remember that breaking no contact is not going to give you closure. In some cases, it might give you more new information, which is hurtful for you enough 
in order to give yourself closure. That's definitely true. And I can't define the healing journey for everyone. You know, people are gonna break new contact if they want to. People are going to have different journeys and different paths. Um, and it's going to take a lot of relapse before you really stick to no contact, perhaps. It depends on everyone's unique journey. But I do wanna remind you that um, every time you break no contact, you are feeding into this illusion of control. Um, you are feeding into this lie about rejection. You're feeding into this uh, fantasy world where um, a person's approval of you uh, will make you uh, approve of yourself. And that's not how it works. You have to approve of yourself first. And um, I think the first step in healing from narcissistic abuse, especially any type of abuse, is really seeking that self-acceptance and learning how to embrace yourself just the way you are right now. And only by doing that can we really um, stage a kind of immunity or build that kind of immunity to uh, the effect that rejection has on us. I know that um, some people who get involved in these emotionally abusive relationships uh, develop a sense of dependency and codependency, perhaps. They feel like they are dependent on their abusers' um, appraisal of them in order to derive a sense of worth. And narcissistic abusers definitely feed our egos, especially in the idealization phase. So I know that's something that we have to learn how to recover from is forgetting about that person's approval of us and really stepping away from people-pleasing habits uh, that really deplete us of our ability to engage in healthy self-care and self-love. So I just want to start the new year by telling you all that you should love yourself, accept yourself uh, just the way you are. And I know that's kind of a cheesy message, but I really hope it hits home that um, feeding into this um, rejection equals my worth idea is really feeding into that whole illusion of control that inevitably leads to breaking no contact, inevitably leads back to that addictive cycle. And that's something that we really want to stay away from in this new year. So wishing you all a happy and healthy week, and I hope to talk to you soon. Until then, take care.